Hello everybody, uh, my name is Jane and I've decided to put together this YouTube channel called Pajama Teacher where I'm basically going to sit in my pajamas and teach because at the moment I'm uh, going through self-isolation which I know lots of you probably are as well at this time um, and I just don't want our brains to get tired and to give up learning so I'm going to put together a range of activities where you can join in with just a pencil and a piece of paper or a pen if you want to and hopefully we'll all be able to learn something. Um, at the moment I teach in a wonderful school in Manchester and have the most amazing year one class who I miss very much at this time. I hope you're all doing really well. If you want to say hello in the comments, please do. It'd be lovely to hear from you. Uh, this is the first YouTube channel I have made, so it's gonna take a little bit of time to get into the swing of things and any feedback would obviously be really appreciated. Or if you just want to say hello, that'd be lovely too. So let's get started. I'm going to start each video with a sort of warm up because it's really easy to just sit still and do nothing while we're at home. So just to get our bodies feeling more active, uh, if you just find a little space in the room and we'll just have a big stretch up. First of all, really wiggle your shoulders and stretch out. Wiggle your fingers and you can do a little twist. And then if you can, try and touch your toes. I'm still here, I promise. <laughs> Okay, once you've had a really good shake, let's do some star jumps as well. Let's do 10, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, I think we're ready to go. So let's start off with some maths. I'm going to start writing a sequence of numbers and I want you to see if you can fill in the missing numbers. So we're going to go with 2, then a missing number then six, then eight, then 10. I want you to have a think about what number might be missing there. There's a number of different ways you can do this. We can draw the, the numbers as circles to just sort of see the pattern. So you could go, there's two, we're missing something there. Then I'll draw our six and then eight and then 10. You might have noticed these are all even numbers. Uh, a lot of you have already spotted the pattern. If I look between these numbers, there's a big jump. But if I just look between here and here, each time they're getting two more on each row. So I'm going to add two more to this and see if it fits the pattern. So my missing number there is four. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And you might have spotted that is actually in our two times tables. The next number pattern I'm going to show you is slightly different. You might see something like this in any quizzes that you might take. So I'm going to start off with 16. Then we're going to go 14. Then missing number. And then 10. And then 8. To find out this missing number, it will be a lot easier if you already know some of your times tables that we've been practicing because if you read it a certain way, you can actually see the pattern already. So it's going, are the numbers getting bigger or smaller? First of all, have a think about that. It goes 16, 14, something, 10, 8. Write down on your piece of paper, are the numbers getting bigger or smaller? Okay, if you've had a think, you'll notice they're getting smaller. 16 is a greater number than 14. So what we're missing here we can find out by looking from this way and going up because we know our two times tables that way quite well. So it goes 8, 10, something, 14, 16. You could do this method, draw some, draw some circles if it helps you. You can do that on your piece of paper now. I'm going to use what I know about the two times tables and I'm going to start from 2 and count up to see what's missing. So it goes 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 14, 16. Okay, give yourself a tick if you've got 12. And let's have a tick for the first one as well. Okay, you might have noticed we've got a new symbol on the page. I'd like you to copy this symbol in your books. It's as simple as just doing this. One line down, one line across. And around this symbol, I want you to write as many words as you can uh, that mean the same thing as that symbol. So I'm going to start off. I know this symbol can mean add. What other ways can you think of uh, to to say the meaning of that symbol, okay? 
have a little go at that one though. So I've just written a few words around this symbol uh, that I could think of. You might have thought of some extra ones and if you have, let me know in the comments. Um, I've thought of more, all together, some, total, add and plus. These are all kinds of words that you'll hear when you see that kind of symbol or when we're doing this operation in our maths. So I'm going to do some calculations underneath. So see if you can work out this number sentence without any help. So I'm going to show you three plus four equals something. On your piece of paper, have a go at figuring out three plus four. So there's different ways you can solve this. One way is you could use your fingers. So you could say three on one hand and four on the other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three plus four makes seven. If you don't have enough fingers for a calculation, then you can actually draw them instead. This one's quite straightforward, but in future, if you're dealing with larger numbers, you might not be able to. So we can draw three circles there and we can do four here. And just add them together practically like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you know your number is seven. Give yourself a tick if you've managed that one. When you know that three plus four is seven, there's actually a trick you can do because you also know that four plus three equals seven as well. We haven't changed any of the numbers involved. We've just swapped them over, what me and my class called the lazy swap. So we can swap those numbers over and we still know that four red three is always going to equal seven. So if you know that one, you know this one. Let's try another one. This time I'm gonna give you slightly larger numbers. Let's go for six add five equals something. See if you can use this method or any other methods that you know to solve that calculation. Also, please feel free to pause the video at any point. I might be talking a bit quickly. That's fine. Just go at your own pace. So if you're doing the drawing the circles method, you can draw six circles. One, two, three, four, five, six and five here. One, two, three, four, five, six plus five. Let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11. If you put 11, give yourself a tick. Well done. Uh, other methods you could do is counting on your fingers. Actually, no, you can't because you'd have to have 11 fingers. Uh, oops. <laughs> so if you have a little look, I've just solved this one. I've done six circles on this side and five on that side. Uh, obviously, you can't use your fingers for this one because it's uh, 11. So we could do this method we could do another method which is where you find the largest number and click that number in your head so you lock it in there and then you count on the smaller number so say if i've got six in my head this is me and i've got six in my head and i'm going to add on five more i can even hold my hand up get my five fingers ready to count on five more so i go six seven eight, nine, 10, 11. So the answer is still 11. There's lots of different methods to do for this. As long as you know that this symbol means combining the numbers together, that means adding them together, okay? The number's always going to get bigger than these smaller numbers because we're making a total. Sometimes we might get really tricky calculations like this one, where there isn't, uh, there aren't just two numbers, but you might have three. So it's three plus two plus four equals something. That is enough to make you go, what? What is happening? But all we need to do is the same method, just keep on adding those numbers together. So you can draw the circles or you can count on two and then count on four on top of that. I'm gonna draw the circles, but see if you can work it out on your paper at the same time. Okay, so I've got three there. One, two, three, add two, one, two. Add four, one, two, three, four. So I'm going to add them all together to find the total because that's what this sign is telling me to do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The answer is nine. Give yourself a tick if you've managed that one. See, we don't need to get worried when we see lots of numbers in a row, three or more, because it's just the same thing with an extra little addition there. Okay, so on this page, I'm going to set you up some questions to solve on your own now. So they're just going to appear on screen in a moment. Hang on. Okay, so I've put a series of different challenges on here. It says your challenge. And this one here is the easier section, but still tricky. So you've got all these different calculations to solve. Uh, this one is slightly harder. So we've got a few larger numbers. And this one's got a triple addition. 
uh, this one is the mega challenge so try this one if you're feeling brave you could perhaps start with these and move on to that one uh, this one has greater numbers and triple additions and this last one is a bit of a mix-up we've not really talked about that one yet so if you are ready to go pause the video and have a little go on your papers now off you go so I'm going to mark through these ones now if you've had a chance to go so this is your last chance to pause the video if you haven't already solved these questions the first one four plus five is nine give yourself a tick if you found that one you could draw the circles or you could count on or use your fingers uh, remember, if you are counting on, always start from the largest number because it just makes it a lot easier. So get five in your head and then count on four more. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Six plus two is eight. Give yourself a tick. Seven plus three. This one is actually one of our number bonds to ten. So if you spotted that, give yourself a double tick. The answer is ten. Well done. Uh, this one again is a number bond, 2 plus 8. I've put the smaller number first to try and trick you there, but the answer is still 10. Give yourself a double tick. Uh, the next one, 5 plus 4. If you remember earlier, we had a little look at what I like to call the lazy swap. So here we had 4 plus 5 is 9. So if you already know that, then you definitely know that 5 plus 4 is 9. Give yourself a tick if you got that one. This last one was quite tricky because it had a triple addition. We have three numbers there, so I call it a triple. We've got 1 plus 2 plus 1. So if you add 1 plus 2 plus 1, you get 1, 2, 3, 4. Give yourself a tick there. Now I'm going to move on to the harder challenges now that we can go through. 6 plus 7. I'm going to get 7 in my head and count on 6 because 7 is the largest number. So 7, add 6. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 is the answer to that one. This one, 12 plus 6, uh, is 18. Give yourself a tick if you've done that. Again, you can count on, or you could have drawn the circles. It might take a little longer, but that's fine. Um, the next one, 9 plus 5, is 14. 6 plus 5 plus 7, we've got a triple here. So, if you want to, you can just start by adding a couple of them and then add the last one on at the end. So you can do 6 plus 5. You can draw the circles if you want to. So I've drawn 6 circles there and 5 there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So this bit equals 11. We can't forget about this extra bit here though, so we still need to add that 7 on. Okay, so I've got 11 here. I'm just going to carry on counting from 11 to add this 7. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. The answer to that one was 18. Well done. Okay, if you decided to go for the mega challenge, I'm going to go through that one now. So 12 plus 4 plus 6, you might have noticed there's actually a number bond to 10 in there. So you could all, all you could start by putting them together. And then, you know, you're just doing 12 add 10, which is maybe a bit easier. So you could draw them out or you could uh, count on in your head, which is a bit trickier. Or use a number line if you have one handy. 12 plus 10 is 22. Give yourself a tick. Uh, 10 plus 5 plus 5. Again, can you spot the number one there? If you can, circle it on your paper. Okay, if you saw it, 5 plus 5, that makes 10 as well. So we've got 10 add 10 there, which you guys know is 20. The next one, I thrown a bit of a curveball in here because I've swapped it around so the equals comes first now with my class we like to call we like to say this is equals but it also means is the same as so something is the same as three plus seven plus five so all we've done is swapped it around it doesn't change the calculation we've just moved this equal sign onto the other side instead of there so I'm going to go for the uh, these two first of all because I can spot a number one to ten so we've got 3 plus 7 is 10, and then we've just got 10 plus 5. 10 plus 5 is 15. So if you read that back, 15 is the same as 3 plus 7 plus 5. Give yourself a tick. Well done, everybody. That is our adding for today. Give yourselves a pat on the back. Woohoo! If you feel like you want to carry on with some maths, then maybe you could set yourself some challenges. Uh, you could do start with number bonds to 10, and maybe try some number bonds to 20. Use some of the ideas that we talked about today. Uh, happy matting.